One of the questions we have is like, okay, but Yvonne, the exams are like more difficult. Are they more difficult? And this I hear students talk about all the time. One of the interesting things that we don't realize is that I can give you an exam with exactly the same technical level. Okay, so the technical level, subject matter level is exactly the same, exactly the same. But I can change the level of difficulty by wording, structure, the structure of the case study, the wording of the case study, and the wording of the required. This is important because it emphasizes why we need to focus more, or one of the reasons we need to focus more on questions and and getting to grips with how to work with case studies better. Okay, so how can I do this? Scenario one. If I say to you in the case study, I go, you know, FOB's company uh, and they have assets and there is a potential need for impairment or something or the other, but I use the word impairment in the case study. At this particular level, chances are I'll have a pass rate of like 80%, maybe more. I'm being a little bit conservative there, right? I'll have a pass rate of about 80% if I ask you a question on like accounting treatment, accounting recognition, right? But an 80% pass rate. Okay, that's cool because we know impairment stuff, right? However, if I change the wording and I go, Bob's company, et cetera, they've got assets, da, 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 and there was some kind of damage to, to the asset and I ask the same question, my pass rate will probably drop to like 60%, maybe a little bit higher, I don't know. Because the key word is different and students have a tendency to look for the key word. We look, we hunt for keywords and we hunt for terminology that is familiar to us. So if I put it directly in this as an impairment, you're like, oh, yes, it's an impairment. Let's do the impairment. If I talk about damage, it's not quite an impairment. And I need you to like make that connection and go, ah, oh, damage equals impairment. And less students are going to be able to do that because they may just be looking for the terminology or they may read over that without actually visualizing what that is. And so the pass rate will drop just because I changed impairment to damage. Okay. But now if I'm really mean and if I'm really, really ugly, I will say Bob has a company, they manufacture assets, et cetera, et cetera. And there's been competition, sales have declined. And so they've had to decrease productivity they've had to decrease production capacity okay and so you know this is what they've been doing and i kind of put this in in that section of of the asset my pass rate will probably drop to about 40 percent because talking about sales and talking about productivity or production capacity is like that relates to sales and inventory it's just a few steps away from the asset itself that creates the production and creates the inventory. And if we see, you know, production capacity decreasing, sales decreasing, et cetera, and, 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 and this is an impairment indicator, but it doesn't say that. It's just information in that area. And so my pass rates are going to drop even further because very few students will make a connection between that's what's happening in that part of the organization. And it means that I've got to be aware of something else. There's a ripple effect. And I've got to be aware that that will impact that, which will impact that, which will impact that. We're not operating in isolated silos. I could get nastier, right? And I could give you the fact that they are, you know, are a company and they manufacture stuff in the background information. I give you the asset info. And then... Three pages later, I talk about the sales and the production, just in general terms. My pass rate's probably going to be 20%. Why? Because there was no hint that these two belong together. If they're not in the same paragraph or in the same sentence, then we see them as separate questions. And we don't see that that information is still the same company and it relates to this. So my answer for all of these, my like theoretical technical answer for all of these on the solution may be exactly the same. It's the same level of technical detail. It's the same subject matter. It's all impairments, which you know, but we're not used to seeing it that way. It didn't occur to us to do. Then we do a question 
And we see this and we go, oh, when we've done the question and we mark it and we go, oh, of course they'll decline in production, decline, of course it impacts. No. Then we start making those connections and your brain goes, you know what? We need to be careful about this in the future. You're changing the way your brain works, which is why you need to do more questions because this is what questions used to ask. Tell me about the impairments because the technical knowledge was more valuable. Then we kind of move to like, yeah, but do you actually know what this looks like for the company? And then we move to like, can you make the connection? If I give you this information, can you make the connection? And now we're looking at, do you have the skill to visualize what's going on in the business and how something will impact the business as a whole? So I'm shifting your skill level while your technical level is exactly the same. Exactly the same. So this, you know, often students will kind of go, just on that, that question, that case study was so difficult. It was so horrible. And then when you look at the solution, you're like, the solution actually wasn't that bad. I knew quite a lot of stuff on the solution, but I couldn't get there. I didn't see it. How was I supposed to see that? Was I supposed to know that? Where did you tell me about that? I've never learned that. I haven't seen that before. How was I supposed to know that? So from this side, the value is on technical knowledge. And on this side, the value is your professional skill. It's the same impairment information. 